because I'm surprised that you're saying you don't think that women should be able to join the Special yeah, Forces. It's not about equality for me. It's about the physical aspect. And the only way for females to be able to join the S SAS, it is, we're not talking the front line here, we're talking the SAS, which is an elite troop. 3% of men only pass the SAS selection. Grown men are reduced to tears. If they do want to go for it and they feel that they can pass the standards, yeah. and they do, then surely they should be allowed the opportunity to join? The opportunity, yes. However, women have been able to join the infantry now. Not a single female has, has passed week four of the training. Yes, there are females that can do it. Let me tell you, I don't know a single female that is serving in the forces that would want to be in the SAS. The females that are actually that physically fit are competing in the Olympics. I don't know where you're going to get the females. OK, well, let's go to Mikey uh, to talk from his perspective. Mikey, you've got a different position on this uh, from Katrina, who, as we've been talking, served in the British Army. You flew out there and you've flown with Special Forces as well. What's your take on this? Are women up to it? Uh, morning, Ben. Morning, Charlotte. Hi, Katrina. Um, yeah, I work with Special Forces as an aviation commander in uh, Northern Ireland, Kosovo, uh, a couple of tours in Baghdad. Uh, and as a chief operations officer over a very special operation that was going on in Helmand province before the troops deployed, the UK troops deployed in 2004. I think this conversation, Ben, is um, it's always, it always defaults back to the, to the physical fitness side. And that's always one argument that comes up a lot. This is a much more of a complex, nuanced conversation. Let me start with the context. Uh, and the context today is that today's warfare um, is asymmetric. Uh, there are niche capabilities that only the special forces units um, uh, training that are required more and more. If you look at US Special Forces, they've never been more abundant in, in, in Africa at the moment. If you look at the operations that the Brits have been, been getting involved in Afghanistan and Iraq, it, there really is a, a massive demand for that. So that's the first thing. There is a huge demand for this, and to, to alienate 50% of the population for being able to actually apply for this and get the best of that 50% of the population, i.e. women, I think you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. The second thing, Ben, is Everyone assumes that what the Special Forces troops do is all about kinetic, i.e. bombs, bullets and mortars, kicking down doors and shooting guns. Actually, a huge part of what the Special Forces do today is what's called SNR and SNI, surveillance and reconnaissance, support and influence. Surveillance and reconnaissance is basically covert, a covert operation to overlook a target uh, or, or basically pattern of life and just observe what's going on. Support and influence is all about talking to tribal elders, especially in Afghanistan, and that was the operation that Op Malaya that we were doing in Afghanistan, was all about SF people going out into the local communities and basically talking to the elders and understanding the nuances of the type of uh, demographics and communities that the British forces will then go and fight in. So there's a lot more to this than just being able to walk 40 kilometres with a 55-pound back over 24 hours, which effectively is the, is the last day okay. of the endurance Mikey, phase so what you're of saying, selection. Oh, so what Katrina's you're saying, desperate to come <laughs> in here. So what Katrina. you're saying is that you and I are built physically the same to be able to do the SAS. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I, or I are you just trying I, to be I the PC recall, man that's up for equality? I can't recall, Katrina, for one second saying that men and women are... Uh, are built the same. What I am saying is, is that women bring a serious amount to the party. When you're going they in, do. in You've hearts and minds, You've got to think about the impact like on that female's body, and it's all great sending her out there now, but what happens in 10 years' time when she's right. injured? Well, Katrina, I, I watch One Born Every Minute, and I've never been so impressed by a woman's ability to endure pain and endure you're resilience the as by giving birth. You're and talking about women giving birth, which is another point of mine, actually. What happens with that SAS soldier when she has a child, she comes back after maternity leave and she doesn't uh, meet the fitness standards anymore? What then? Does she just get discharged or does she get sent back to the normal army? How does that work? Well, it's a different debate. I mean, again, you're going, Katrina, you're going straight down to the, to the, to the physical aspects. But it, what this I'm talking isn't about about equality is, at all. It is I, about the I physical finish? aspects. Can I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I literally finish a sentence for one second? Let's hear, let's hear Mikey's response to that. Can, all, all I'm saying is, Katrina, is, is that the roles that the Special, for, special Forces units endure in this new, in this new landscape of warfare, the there is... Yeah. A, are you jumping in again? Yeah, yeah go, I go am. on, Mikey. Be I'm brave. Saying, I'm <laughs> Mikey, saying, be brave. Keep going. I, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying, Katrina, that men and women are the same. What I'm saying is, is that women should be given the opportunity, because the roles that they can perform in the requirements that are that are that are required of special forces units, units today is a really important one, and and the role is growing, and it's growing at a rapid way. The SRR, which is the um, the special reconnaissance. Regiment, that has women. SFSG, Special Forces Support Group, which is 
predominantly paras and Royal Marines. Women are allowed to join that. Women have actually been working with the Special Forces for years. So all this is doing is formalising something which is, a, which is a great step in the right direction. Okay, Mikey, I let's hear give... your point on physicality. Let, let's go back to Katrina for one last comment from you then, Katrina. My point, he's saying about the opportunity. Yes, they should be given the opportunity, but if they can't meet the standards, i.e. the physical standards that are required, you can't do okay, the job. So but look, no, but the... Well, that's clear. They yeah. wouldn't get through. So it's yeah. only available to those people who could but pass the But you do the think they should standards. be given the opportunity, but the they have to The opportunity, but I don't think anyone will pass it. Oh. Good it luck if he can find see. someone to. Well, ben, I... Charlotte, ben Charlotte, one, one last thing before I go. Go. What is the motto of the SAS? Who dares wins? Exactly. A no more apt motto than to embark on this opportunity by recruiting or giving women the recruitment Mikey, to uh, the opportunity to apply. one last thing for you. Were you Special Forces? Uh, I was the aviation commander that worked with them, so I never that went through selection. With them, but you didn't passed. join Special Forces. Was that because you weren't up to the standard? Um, I, I, I'm a fit guy, but I don't, whether, I could, whether I could pull 55... I I'm, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, whether I... Whether I could pull... I mean, I'll leave that to Ben, actually. Ben, ben follows me on Instagram. Yeah. He knows I'm, yeah. I'm not sure that's relevant, to be fair, because I mean, whether Mikey was... I mean, what Mikey managed to do for, in his role in the forces, what he chose to do, uh, I'm not sure it's relevant whether he would have been special forces or not. I think he's just arguing, mm. as we've clearly mm. said, that women should be given the opportunity to see if they would choose to do that. Mm.